All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome into episode three of the Free Agent Profile series. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at Green Bay Packers center, Corey Lindsay, a guy right now who's expected to hit the open market. All signs are pointing to him not returning to Green Bay in the offseason. Okay, so very, very interesting. Let's dive in. Coming in at six foot three, 300 pounds, 29 years old. Quite frankly, Corey Lindsay has been a staple for the Packers offensive line for the majority of the last decade, okay, especially in these last three, four seasons where Lindsay's play is definitely elevated. I mean, you're starting to take a look at Corey Lindsay as a player and comparing him to the top centers in the league, guys like um, Eric McCoy, Saints, uh, Rodney Hudson, Vegas Raiders, who else? Mitch Morse. I mean, Lindsay's play is right there with those guys. I would go as far as to say right now that Corey Lindsay's He's a top six, top seven center in the league today at 29 years old. I think by the time next season rolls around, he's, he's, uh, he's going to be 30. So if you're a team like the New York Jets with a massive, massive need at the interior of the offensive line, I feel like Corey Lindsay has to be on the Jets' radar. He has to. And there's actually been a link, right? We've, we've heard rumors that the Jets are interested in Lindsay if he does hit the open market, all right? So... We're looking at Lindsey, what is he good at? Let's talk about his skill set, right? In the run game specifically, he's absolutely incredible. One of, if not the best run blocking centers in the league. I mean, when you take a look at his zone running system, the responsibilities for interior offensive linemen, it's all about getting from point A to point B, really taking charge, leading the charge post snap, uh, being strong and stout at the contact point, getting to the second level to take on linebackers. These are all traits that Corey Lindsay does really, really well. Okay. And then of course, when you talk about pass protection, he doesn't miss a beat. Now I will say he's better in run blocking than pass protection, but Still a great player, right? Still totally technically sound in both aspects. Corey Lindsay will definitely be a hot commodity if he hits the if he hits the open market. So, all in all, we know who Corey Lindsay is. He's great in run blocking, really good in pass protection, fantastic system fit, perfectly built for that zone running system. And one thing that I also wanted to bring up as well, uh, definitely did not want this to fly under the radar because I feel like personally it's just extremely relevant in today's world. Of course, Corey Lindsay is a great player. He's a great teammate, right? Players love playing with him. But when you're looking at Corey Lindsay off the field, he's also a great human being. I mean, this is an individual who's donating thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars, uh, volunteering, spending time helping nonprofits, uh, dealing with uh, neglected kids, right? Kids that were abused and whatnot. Corey, he was, uh, he was a Walter Payton nominee from Green Bay. So throughout his career, Corey Lindsay has been great on the field. He's been great off the field. I mean, if, if if you were to land with the New York Jets right now, it would look like a massive, massive upgrade over Connor McGovern, who I'm going to get into in just a minute with that uh, that with, with that looming contract. But let's take a look at the 2020 stats and see how he stacked up in 15 total games. Okay, a few of those games were actually in the playoffs. Uh, missed some time due to injury. Not that big of a deal. Just a small MCL sprain. Not some sort of injury prone player here or anything like that. He had 734 overall snaps. Seven total pressures, one sack allowed. First team, all pro. So Corey Lindsay's coming off an incredible season, and all signs are pointing to Lindsay hitting the open market. There's a chance that Green Bay can bring it back, but it's looking unlikely. Okay, so contract projection. I love doing, I, I typically love, I always look forward to doing the contract projections. But I would say right now, he would sign a similar deal to the top centers in the league, right? A similar deal to what Connor McGovern signed last offseason with the New York Jets. Connor McGovern, I, th I think McGovern's contract was a three-year, $29, $28 million deal. That's pretty high for a center. That's like, we need you, we need you. We're, we're relying on you. You have to be solid. Like, you have to be good. And McGovern did not live up to that, okay? So... We're going to get into that in just a second here, but I would say right now the best contract projection for Lindsay, I would say right now three years, $31 million. Um, Rodney Hudson signed a similar deal uh, last offseason. It was a three-year, $33 million. I would say right now he's the best center in the entire National Football League. So similar contracts in that regard. Again, Lindsay would be an upgrade. So now it begs the question, what do you do with McGovern? I mean, you know, you just signed him to a three-year big deal for, for the center position. What do you do with him now? Well, 
you could either cut him, you could try to trade him, or, what's been discussed, you can move McGovern to guard. With Becton and Fant, Lindsay at center, and now we're moving Connor McGovern to guard, the hope would be that McGovern, with this brand new coaching staff, looks somewhat like he did in Denver, because McGovern is versatile, he can play some guard, he has played guard before in the past, and now all of a sudden the Jets really only have one hole left on the offensive line that you have to kind of figure out what to do next season. Could it be addressed in the draft? Could it be addressed, you know, maybe like a Trey Smith or a Wyatt Davis or whoever it may, might be? Could it be addressed in free agency with adding another guard? Could it be re-signing Pat Elfline, which is something that I would definitely not be opposed to doing. Um, I don't think Elfline would be like the long-term option, but I really, really like what Elfline did towards the tail end of the season last year after we picked him up from uh, Minnesota. So a lot of moving parts here. If the Jets were to go out and, and bring in Corey Lindsay, we would now move Connor McGovern, whether it be to a new team or to a new position, it makes McGovern expendable. But the issue, right, the only downside of bringing Corey Lindsay in is now it's like, oh, now, now we have fi essentially $50 million invested in two players on the interior of the offensive line. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, especially for McGovern. If he doesn't play well, that's a lot of money for one really good player and one so-so player. So that's the only concern, but you can't just... Like, and then you could, of course, push back at me and say, okay, well, what's the alternative? Just to keep him and suck and not sign Lindsay and not try to get better? That's why we have the cap space in the first place. That's why the money's there. It's to spend it on players to make the team better. So the Jets can go in a bunch of different ways here, but I feel like at the end of the day, Corey Lindsay bringing him in, getting him in, doing our homework on him, number one, and then number two, getting him in to at least negotiate a contract. Those would be my top priorities. I really like Corey Lindsay. Obviously, I think it would be a top, top priority to bring him in. And like I said before, we've heard the rumor that the Jets would be interested if he does hit the open market. So I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Would you like Corey Lindsay? Would you opt for, you know, opt against it and spend the money elsewhere? It's crazy. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for sticking with the channel. And as always, go Jets.